was rinsing off my car. My tires were so muddy. Hey everybody, happy new year. And I am so excited because I have a guest here today who is going to give me a hand. There is nothing, <laughs> thank you. There's nothing better than getting a little help to do the big jobs. And so I am going to get Michael. We're gonna get my truck. We're gonna load up some of that wood. We're gonna take it over. One of my fans had suggested that I use this wood to hold down my tarps. So I thought this job is gonna go so much better with a couple of extra set of hands. So stay tuned. This one might go. Someone might attack. Yeah, that looks good. We can load her up right there. It's loading up. Redwood? A cedar. There's a cedar mill close five miles from me. See, you can see where they didn't wet, where the air and the water didn't hit them. They're still beautiful. Yeah. Really nice looking. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it smells so good. You smell it? Yes. I love the smell of cedar. You did it, Michael. Bingo. Okay. Now we just unload it. Yeah. All right. I've, I've only been in four wheel drive on this like a couple of times, so we'll see how we do. Might not even need it, but I think I'll, I think I want to, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here we go. didn't move too much, but I think it would be nicer just to have it all mm -hmm. pinned down, don't you? Mm -hmm. I'm driving over all this wet soil. I'm going to turn around. I might not have ought to turned around in the wettest part of the soil. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Question is how high do we want to go? That's probably as far as I'm going to go. It's an awfully nice rock for for like a garden. You know, because you almost sit on it. Hey, see if I have any potatoes in there, okay? <laughs> They're called skinks. Oh, the there we go. There's one. They've got legs. Yeah. Never saw one of them before. There were like five under here and he yeah. picked up that rock and they all went, they move really fast. <laughs> Where'd he go? That's gone. But the problem is it's everywhere. And, and not, not edible. It actually is. It's loaded with vitamin C. Really? Yeah. It's like purslane. Yeah, purslane. Purslane is even better. Yeah. But it's, it's not so invasive. invasive. Though. It's well, everywhere. that's true too, yeah. I've got it. I mean, there's there's no way I can get rid of it now. It's everywhere. And I don't know if I brought it in or if it was already here. I didn't notice it before I had the garden. 
I got 11. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just on this side, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. out of a lake bloomer. You're in the homestead and I'm in the gardener. See? Yep. Oh. I just thought that we would uh, have a little chat and you could tell us about yourself because I'm just meeting you for the first time. What would you like to know? Well, so tell me about your, your and Lila's place in the Phoenix area. Yeah, well, I am a pastor there in Scottsdale and we, our church bought a three acre property it was a horse property, so it was pretty much dirt except for a horse barn and a house uh, and three acres. We bought it to do a, a big building. That's what churches do. We were about 60 or 70 people. And then um, after about 10 years, this was back in 95. Wow. A long time ago. So uh, about, you know, 10 years later when we had all these plans and they always fell through and I always thought, well, maybe um, God has another purpose. Right. And right about at that time, this was about in uh, 2009, uh, I saw a video called Homegrown Revolution. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's I don't a great know. little 10 minute video. Um, uh, this family, just a dad and son and daughter in Pasadena right by a freeway, oh, yeah. a fifth of an acre, yes. grows all their food, right. held up a trowel and said, it's dangerous to grow your own food or something like that, you know. Right. And I saw that, it was a 10 minute video and it was life changing. I just said, wow. See, here, here was about, I was about 57 years old at the time. It was about 12, just turned 69, so about 12 years ago. I thought, 
I had never grown any food in my whole life. I didn't know how to, I didn't work with animals or anything like that. It's time. I don't want to go to my grave not knowing how to grow food. And it was this sense of being uh, so dependent on others to grow. And then this disconnect, too, I know. from all the people that grew food. It's like, I'm out of the loop. At that time, I said to her, because we had lived in the, in the house when we started the church for about a year or two, and then we moved about two miles away. And I knew we were going to move back in and start doing something there. And she did not want to move in. She thought it was kind of crazy. You know, we've been there, done that. We had a nice house two miles away in a subdivision. But um, she realized God was in it. And uh, so we started there at the house. I, I got about two, a couple, quite a few tons of dirt on my driveway and started making going on YouTube, how do you make a garden bed, put irrigation in, we got some chickens. And we were doing it at the same time. We made garden beds, we planted trees, and we got our whole backyard looking pretty nice, you know? And, and we said, I think it's time we need to go yeah. move there. So um, we did in November, Thanksgiving in 2009. And uh, the first year, with no plans, we just like, I had a friend that came and he helped me plant. We dug, a, we, we rented this auger 16 inch auger and uh, dug, That's a big auger. dug 70 holes in one day and then the next day we pl we had 70 trees we planted all the trees. The next citrus? Day, citrus and uh, pecan and all sorts of trees, mulberry, lots of mulberry trees. Wait, what, what was the <laughs> amount of time between you moving back to the property and you digging the holes? Oh, about, about a month. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, we started in a backyard, actually, and we I made a couple of So you learned a few yeah. things, yeah. And then my friend came and he helped build a little barn, plant the trees, do a few other things. So uh, it just kind of unfolded. We started in the back and then learned how to make arbors, and then we got goats. Lila got the goats uh, pretty much uh, within the next year. So and you're then, just madly watching all these YouTube videos, right? Yeah, Learned just like, everything. yeah, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and I wouldn't suggest to start in your mid-50s, this new yeah. thing, but, well, I did you know, too. preach in the choir. Well, uh, yeah, um, that's what you do, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. Well, you no, actually, we're supposed to preach to the masses, not yes. just to the choir. <laughs> I, I always say, if an old fart like me can do it, you young guys... That's you right. You should be just like jumping on this stuff. What did your congregation, you still had a congregation at this point? What did they well, think about this? Well, we went into a home church then. We just said, we're good with a home church. We're not going to build a big, big building. Yeah. We'll just do the home church. And everybody was good with that. Well, the people that were good with that stayed, the rest left. Okay. So we had, you know, 20 people or so. We have like 10 to 20 people now. Yeah. So um, they were good. Like, yeah, whatever, you know. Uh, probably did they want to be a part of it? or A, a, a couple did, and for a while they, they uh, helped for a while. And then um, we just kind of went in a different direction uh, doing the... Lila started making goat milk caramels uh, with the goat milk. Is that a business? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's, be sure and tell my audience. Yeah. What is the name of the company? It's uh, The Simple Farm. And it's dot net, the simple farm dot net, and we sell them online. Okay. So through um, the website or on yeah, Etsy? through the website. Okay. Got some. Well, we got lots of chickens, got the goats, and then we started, you know, milking them and having all this milk. So that's why she decided to do the goat milk caramels. If you had it to do over again, what would you do differently? Huh, that's a good question. Well, besides start younger. Yeah. Because <laughs> you had huh. children at home at the time, right? No. Oh, they were all gone. Yeah, they were gone. Okay. And uh, they were all grown. We had grandkids. They were living in Portland oh, okay. and in Washington. Um, but so it was just Lila and I. We had some help. God sent some good help at some times to volunteer a little bit. But pretty much, what do we want to do next? What do we want to do here? We just had this clear blank slate, you know, um, clear canvas, and just, just without a plan, just did it as so learned you, as we went. So. Pretty much right away, you were trying to make money on your, on your simple farm. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta with a home church. You know. You, when you say home church, tell us what you mean. Um, I, 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 the first thing that comes to my mind is not a whole lot of fluff. You know, just you come together, 
You, sort of like people coming to your house for church, yeah, right? It's Is pretty it much the same like thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you we come together, we uh, sing. Mm -hmm. I, I play piano because I'm the only musician there. Um, we come together just like church, but in a home. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we sing, we worship God, we open the word, discussion, mm -hmm. and then we eat. Then we go home, shine your light. That's nice. really simple. People bring food every week? Or? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, there's one gal that mostly brings the food. <laughs> like, we kind of fast if she doesn't bring the food. <laughs> but, yeah, but no, everybody does. Everybody chips yeah. in and brings a little. My wife's been making soup lately, and it's oh, been going great. all the well. So, so that's what we've been doing for the last, uh, I don't that, know. That gives years. you a lot of nourishment for your work at the farm. Just, you know, it sets the week off yeah. in a great way with community. Yeah. I mean, this is what I've been talking about since I started gardening, is trying to build community. We had a market for a couple years, too, where quite a few people came. Produce? Um, or yeah, we had produce, our eggs. We had like 50 chickens at one time. So we were selling eggs and the produce. And um, we, we invited people that made bread and a couple other vendors there. I got an Airbnb in Franklin. And uh, in the Airbnb, it's a grand piano there. It's like, whoa, this is so good. Because I, I came to relax, read, and maybe play some music and maybe write. And uh, the piano's so out of tune. Oh, yeah. And there's no foot pedals. <laughs> it's oh, like, dear. This ain't going to work too well. So I had a friend here, and they lent me a, a keyboard. So, oh. um, yeah, I, I, I still write music. I, I've written music since I became a Christian. Yeah. But, and Christian music. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the, the one song that you wrote actually yeah. became a big hit. Yeah. It, people are actually still singing it today. Um, 1980, I wrote, uh, You Are My Hiding Place. You are my hiding place. Yes. And you are my hiding place. Yes. I, I, have you heard that? Yes. Oh. Yes. And I wrote a few songs when I was with Jews for Jesus. I traveled with their music group, and I wrote a few songs for them. They put it on their, uh, it's called David's Hope album. Okay. So, the Christian group called Selah, S-E-L-A-H, um, they recorded it maybe 10, 15 years ago. But Maranatha recorded it. Um, that was all those praise albums, praise one, two, three, four, twelve. You know, uh, it was on the Praise Six album back in 1981. Wow! So, um, and then a couple other groups kind of picked it up. Have you tried to continue to write those kinds of songs? Yeah, I do write them, but you know, I that was that was discovered. I I didn't even like put Try. it out there. People were singing it in a congregation where the people from Maranatha Music went, and they, who wrote that? They're like, well, this friend, and, and they tracked me down. I'm going to be getting him out more, I think, just because... I of, think you should. I mean, yeah. we only go around once for yeah. this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, tomorrow when it's storming, you hunker mm -hmm. down, yep. get lots of hot tea, you know, maybe we could get you to come over with the keyboard and maybe play something and sing it. And I'm sure my audience looks forward to hearing from you again sometime. So. Okay. Thank you for coming and helping. And I, I actually, this was good for me because, you know, I'm just driving and eating and yeah, <laughs> not not doing a lot of work. So I, I actually needed the exercise. So this was good for me too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> I feel so blessed to have this kind, wonderful person helping me today, and you were blessed by it too, right? Yeah. And so maybe we can have them back. Actually, you're go both going to come over on Tuesday, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. For a couple of hours? Yeah. So, you know, maybe I'll... Or sometime next week or the week Bef after or something. Before you leave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get to see them again, and you will get to see them again. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss any of the action. You never know who's going to pop up <laughs> right here on my Tennessee homestead. I'm Kay, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.